Number 57. The Cullinan Diamond was the largest natural diamond ever found January 25th, 1905. It weighed 3,104 carats. Crazy. And one carat equals 200 milligrams. How many carbon atoms were present in the stone? Now, we did a question just like this one in number 56, so if you're on the playlist and you want a more in-depth version, just click the back button to get that version. This one will kind of be a little bit more quick. So, let's get to it. So, basically, they started us off with, whoop, they started us off with 3,104 carats. So, 3,104 carats. But now, carats of what? They tell us that it's a diamond, but we should know that diamond is basically just made up of one element. It's just made up of carbon. Crazy how these diamonds that are for engagement rings are thousands of dollars, but it's only carbon. <laughs> so it's basically carrots of C. And they want to know how many carbon atoms are there. So at the end of the road, we want to get to atoms of carbon. Okay. But they gave us a conversion factor. They say that one carrot equals 200 milligrams. So I can convert from carrots of carbon to milligrams of carbon, so that's closing the gap a little bit, but how am I going to get from milligrams of carbon to atoms? Well, generally speaking, whenever we go over to atoms, we usually come from moles, and moles usually comes from grams. So the next step I would have to do is get to grams of carbon, and then from there we go to moles of carbon, and then finally to atoms. So this is a one, two, three, four step process, but it's still just a conversion. So we're just going to do it all in one shot, meaning we're not going to get the answer for every single step. You'll see what I'm talking about. So always start with what you're given. In this case, it's 3,104 carats of C. Now with conversions, any conversion, you always times by ratio carats of C on the bottom and what you want next up top. So we're trying to find milligrams of carbon. That's the first step. So milligrams of carbon. What are the numbers here? It comes from the relationship that they gave us here. They're telling us that one carat equals 200 milligrams. And that's how you get rid of carats. So this step is done. Now we move on. So times by another ratio in which milligrams goes on the bottom and we want to get to grams. So grams of carbon would go on the top. This is your chapter one SI unit conversions. You guys should know this by now. If not, go back to chapter one. There's hundreds of questions on it, all right? So you should know that either one gram equals a thousand milligrams, or if you feel more comfortable using one milligram, it would be 10 to the negative three grams, but either way you would get the same answer. I'm going to go with the first one because I don't like to use the negative exponents, so I'm just going to say one gram equals a thousand milligrams, milligrams cancels out, and we've done the second part. We're halfway there. So now I'm not done yet, so I have to times by another ratio grams of carbon on the bottom because that's what I want to cancel out, and in this case now it's moles of carbon. What is the information behind a mole and a gram? So this is telling us that one mole of anything equals the molar mass in grams of that same anything. And I say x and x, but x could be equal to a compound or it could be equal to a element. The molar mass is always going to be found on the periodic table. So here we're looking at carbon so I got to look on the periodic table for carbon. And I put this over here for you guys. This is what's on the periodic table. And to get the mass, it's always going to be the higher number out of the two. So it's going to be the 12.01 and not the 6. The 6 is the atomic number. That's not equal to the mass. So 1 mole, because 1 mole, equals 12.01. Grams cancel out with grams. And the third step is done. But we're not there yet, so one more conversion times by that ratio, mole of C on the bottom, atom of C up top. What's the conversion between moles and atoms? We should know that, I'll put it down here, one mole of anything equals Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of the same thing. So... 
the one goes with the mole, so one mole is Avogadro's number in atoms, so 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Moles of carbon cancel out, and we just finish our fourth, our, our fourth part. So now you could just multiply this all in one shot. I'll do the top, the numerator, then I'll do the denominator, and I'll divide it. So if you multiply the numerator, you get 3104 times 200 times 6.022 I'm sent to the 23rd, so I'll cut this off after a couple of decimals. 3.73846 times 10 to the 29th, all over. Now you just do the, the bottom, which is just 1,000 times 12.01. So you get 12, 12,010, and then you just divide the two. So let me just do that math quickly. Now, you just got to keep it with the sig figs. There was four sig figs here, so we just need to include four sig figs in our answer. So it'd be 3.113 times 10 to the 25th, and that's atoms of C. Box that answer off. That's the answer to this problem. All right? Pretty straightforward. This one was a cool one because it was we had to convert a lot of things. But hopefully this helped, guys. If it did, click the like button, let me know in the comments. And if you wouldn't mind, hit the subscribe button. You know, I'm assuming you would want to know when our next batch of questions come out. We'd love to help you guys. So the support there is, you know, I'm so very grateful for that. Thank you for supporting us. I will see you guys all in number 58. See you later.